welcome back to the CF Nevada YouTube channel where today we're gonna start working on one of our trailers. So we gotta go pick up some metal, gotta hook up this trailer, go get the new metal that we're gonna be using for it and uh, we'll be back to the shop. It's probably gonna take a couple days to uh, get this all put together um, but it's gonna be exciting because we got a lot of stuff coming our way with uh, the truck. Uh, one of those new trailers and possibly another one so stay tuned and uh, let's go get some metal right, we just got back from the steel shop we got some new new to us he just had a lot of extra stuff sitting around in his shop um, but four by four uh, box tubing that we are going to turn into some uh, new log bunks for our trailer so we're going to go ahead and cut this four by four tubing so we're gonna have a cross member and an upright to make some log bunks uh, for this trailer so we can start hauling some logs we're gonna make four of them so that the logs that they got cut in some of the areas are shorties they're at like 13 feet um, or 13 and a half uh, hopefully we can get the fellers to cut them a little bit longer uh, but this trailer is 30 feet so if they're cut them full length uh, we can take a full load of logs on it and if we got to deal with the shorties then i got four bunks to uh deal with it so we got the metal today we'll probably get back in the shop later and uh start working on it so let's get to okay it. it's the next morning it's a little chilly I got some of my cold weather gear on it's already been in the 20s now in the morning and it's getting cold so i got the metal off the trailer and we're gonna pull over our evolution saw and start cutting these pieces down to size then we're gonna hook up our Miller welder and uh, start tacking this together and kind of get what we want. Um, the idea is gonna be essentially an eight foot um, log bunk that's gonna go across the trailer with a five foot upright. We're going to cut some plate that's gonna gusset the sides after we put them together and then also put a cap on uh, the uh, tops of the uprights so got a lot to get got a lot of work to get going so we're gonna get going so we're gonna be able to get a five footer out of this long piece here let's see one two three four five pieces we should be able to get out of this one and then we got another five footer two of them out of that one and then we're gonna go for our longer cross members out of the other, so five, so that'd be six, seven. Where was the other one? Oh, it's on the trailer already. So, um, yeah, so we just gotta cut seven of the five footers out of this, and then we got four of the cross members, and then we'll get to the steel plate. So, let's get to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure like 15 times. Before I actually go to cut it because this stuff ain't cheap ah, it's expensive um, the evolution saw that we got here I got this a while back and um, it's if you don't have one and you're looking for a metal cutting saw it's pretty awesome I'm not gonna lie I like it a lot so go ahead and uh, get this set up So this saw cuts through it like butter and the uh, metal blade on there, um, it it's lasts a long time. We've cut some oil pipe with it. Uh, we've cut a whole bunch of other metal projects with it and it's still the original blade, haven't done anything to it. Uh, the reason why I went with the Evolution and why I like it so much is that it spins at a lower RPM and the blades are made for that slower RPM. So if you go with like 
think the DeWalt's and Makita's and the other ones that are out there in Milwaukee's, they spin at a higher RPM, but when you're cutting the metal, you want it a little bit slower, and uh, especially for anything thick and uh, heavy duty, that slower speed helps get that metal um, cut very smooth and efficiently, and I've never had any problems, so that's why I like it. So we got all our upright pieces cut now, and got the first cross member here cut and starting to lay it out just to see what it would look like and uh, I'm liking it because the other reason why I'm only going with a five foot upright is because the logs I got to be able to grab them with my excavator and being that that's five foot the trailer already sits like four feet off the ground and you know, I got to get it up over 10 11 feet just to be able to pick the log up and pull it off the trailer so uh, this is why I'm kind of going with this shorter uh, upright design and just kind of fitting it to my needs and being able to get these logs um, out of the forest so but it's gonna be almost just under just a tiny tiny bit under um, eight foot across on the trailer and then we'll have a little piece that's gonna get welded in the bottom to go into the stake pockets so I can remove these when I don't need it and maybe be able to use this trailer still as a hay trailer so We'll see, but let's get the rest of these pieces cut up. All right, so I got the cross members and uprights all cut, laid out in here. I'm gonna come through and uh, tack all these on the top here so I can move them around and uh, then we'll get the whole bead around it. Uh, I still gotta cut the uh, plate and the, on the plates, I'm gonna go ahead and gusset these, but I'm not really sure how big I wanna make the gussets yet. Um, I gotta kinda of measure out how much of the material I still have. Uh, but we're gonna gusset those and put a plate on the bottom that these will kinda of get boxed in on the corners here to make them stronger. And then I gotta cut a bunch of pieces so I can cap all these so we don't get any uh, bark and pieces of wood down inside or keep water out. Uh, so, still got a lot more to do. But we're going to go ahead and get the welder out. We'll tack on all these tops so that at least they're somewhat together. <laughs> gets them up off of the floor. I can weld the bottom sides and then I can get that plate steel up in there where I want it and uh, be able to weld all that stuff on the bottom so I can kind of rotate each one that way. Uh, but go ahead and get all this stuff at least if I can get all this welded up today and then work on the steel plate tomorrow for the gusseting. I should have it hopefully all wrapped up by tomorrow. Uh, so we'll see. All right, we got the uh, uprights and the cross members all welded up. And I'm going to stop here for today because I got to pull out that quarter inch plate that's over there and pull out the plasma cutter and cut the gussets and the caps for the top of these because I want to seal them up. And uh, but overall, very happy. Uh, welds look pretty good. Not bad for a guy that's never taken a class. But uh, we're going to get this all welded up and hopefully finished tomorrow, maybe the next day, because I've got to go do some tractor work. But we'll get back out here and get all that stuff cut up next. We're back out here the next day. I uh, cut a bunch of these 45 degree angled pieces to go right in between the cross member and the upright. Uh, the only thing is that with the welds and stuff in there, instead of grinding them all out, 
think I'm just gonna cut off this little piece uh, that goes across the middle here, and then it should uh, sit in there just fine and be able to weld right up to the upright and cross member. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fire up the plasma cutter here and we'll uh, cut out this little middle piece. Okay, so I got the 45 pieces cut. The inside little cross piece, um, we plasma cut that off and now just sitting them all up against each upright. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and get the welder out and get all this stuff welded up. I think it's gonna make it a little bit more stronger. And then I will cut out some of this uh, quarter inch steel plate to then connect them from the outside edge down and uh, then we'll get some caps cut and weld those on. And then this, for the most part, will be done today. I gotta run up to the steel yard tomorrow and pick up some uh, tubing that I can weld on the bottom of these that'll drop into my stake pockets. And then I was also thinking about uh, cutting some of that square tubing, um, a few pieces where these are gonna be sitting across on the um, I-beams on the trailer. I was gonna weld on a couple of cut off pieces of the square tubing, which will just help prevent this from rocking back and forth. Uh, but it also gives me a point to throw a chain through it and lift it off the trailer when uh, I wanna take these off if I don't wanna use it as a log trailer. So, cause I am making these removable. So let's go ahead and get these pieces welded up and uh, we'll so keep going. So far, I think it's looking pretty good. It, uh, a little bit of cleanup to do on there and uh, smooth out a couple of spots so I can get that plate on it um, to just tie everything in and make it really strong. But uh, I got to run over and go drill some holes at a friend's farm. So go do that and I'll be right back. getting closer and I know I say all right a lot but I got the uh, forklift out lifting these uh, bunks up so I can get the, to the bottom and weld on the quarter inch plate that I want so we'll have the right depth spacing um, on the outside rail to the inside I-beam. So I figured it'd be a lot easier just to stand these things up on end oh, um, than it would be to try and uh, weld them on the ground. So take a look. So I just got this uh, plate here. Grab this. So I got this plate. It's gonna go on bottom here weld that in the place and it's going to connect this outside upright to the cross member but it's also giving me a quarter inch gap here uh, because on the trailer the i-beams in the center i think with the decking the way it was originally made it put those i-beams up um, like a quarter inch so i'm thinking the decking must have gone all the way across before or however they did it um, i don't know 
1966 Navy trailer. So whatever they designed that one for. So I'm gonna put this quarter inch plate on the outside to be able to space this a little bit so then everything on that cross member is sitting flush on the trailer. So we'll go ahead and weld this up. So we got the truck and trailer hooked up. We got the bunks up on the trailer and the kids are screaming in the background and it's windy. So I don't know if the audio is gonna be as good, but we got these up on the trailer. We are going to flip them up tomorrow. Uh, I gotta get some one by one and a half by two and a half because these are different size steak pockets. Um, but I'm gonna get some one and a half by two and a half that's gonna go in there, and then we're gonna weld it to the bottom of the quarter inch plate that I put on the bottom here. So when we stand these up, I'll set the um, tubing through here, tack it on, then we can pull them back out, weld it the rest of the way, and be able to have those uh, drilled out so I can pin them so they're gonna stay in place but then also have this on here to keep it from rocking forward and back when there's nothing, no load on the trailer. Um, that's just what I came up with. Just kind of figured that'd be the easiest to be able to throw a chain or a strap through it and pull them off when I'm not using them. If I wanted to go ahead and deck this and make this a um, hay trailer along with that other trailer and then I can turn them into a set of doubles. Um, but overall, pretty happy with it so far. We're gonna go ahead and hopefully finish up the welding tomorrow. The other thing I did, run out of gaff and wire. So can I, can't use the welder when you don't have any of that stuff. Um, but we'll get to it and uh, we'll keep working on it. Next thing we've gotta do, throw on some mud flaps, clean up the uh, side here, throw some paint on there, get some of that DOT tape on, and uh, get this thing ready to hit the road. Back in the shop, and I finally got the metal that I needed to make the stake pocket holders or slot that's where it's gonna go in the stake pocket. Whatever you'd call this piece. Um, anyway, so I got it cut down to seven inches, so it drops just below uh, the stake pocket opening. And there's the piece in the pocket. I got these pins that are gonna go through these pieces. Actually, they're gonna go a long ways. And uh, it allows me to pin that down. I don't know if I'm making sense, but I'll show you. As soon as I get all these drilled up, be able to go outside and show you on the trailer. So, I got the first bunk done. I got the tubing welded up to the bottom here. And this tubing allows me to drop these bunks down into my stake pockets and then I got the pin that I go through them so then I can remove them. I got a couple uh, pieces of my uh, square tubing here, uh, the four by four that I'm gonna weld one on each part of the, uh, what you call it, I-beam in the center. Um, one on this side, one on the opposite side. One that's gonna give me a little better strength here for it to rock back and forth. Because if that's sitting on the I-beam one on each side, it just gives it that uh, stability here. So it's not rocking back and forth as it is right now. These aren't gonna go anywhere, um, but when there's no load on it, I just don't want them rattling a whole bunch and uh, putting all that strain right here on this tubing. Because that tube is really not there for strength. It's just to keep these things locked in. Um, but putting those square pieces in the center will help just prevent this from rocking back and forth. But the main reason why I want to put it on there is to be able to throw a chain through those two pieces and go under. And then I can pick these off and uh, remove them when I don't want to use the log bunks. So the whole idea is to make these um, 
as a removable log bunk and use this trailer when I want to haul logs or get a deck put in here and be able to use it as a hay trailer. So might as well, right? I got it for dual purpose now. So a uh, little other thing I had to do on the other side was this was missing uh, a stake pocket here on the rear and kind of wanted to put it right over the axle. Uh, so I ended up having to cut a small piece off of one of the um, stake pockets, which there's a whole bunch on the back for some reason. I don't know why you would need um, eight of them on the back, but um, I ended up cutting one of them off with the strapping and be able to tie that in because then I could use it as a hook point with the chain and tie my logs down because um, I'm thinking I'll be able to tie or I want to tie them down um, at each bunk here and reading the DOT stuff um, that's what it requires is having a, a wrapper or chain around each bunk because they're gonna be four bunks on here and they're gonna be about 10 feet apart on each one because they're cutting the logs at 13 or 16 footers um, in some of these areas so that allows me to get a stack on the rear and then a stack on the front um, so but we got one done we'll get back out here tomorrow when there's some more sunlight and it's not so cold because it's already dropping the 40 degrees outside and So we got our bottom post stake pocket locks, holders, whatever you want to call them, in place. So the uh, pins will be able to go through in the bottom here. We got all of them on now. And uh, we're about to drop this last one into place. Just need to do a couple of touch up spots and then weld the center pieces in there to help with the just the support of this from rocking back and forth, but then also gives me my chain connection to pull them off. Um. bunks are all welded up we got the stake pockets all done and able to lock those in I also got my uh, little chain holders to um, be able to chain through and uh, pull them off in case I want to use the trailer for something else this has been a pretty big task uh, for the last week and pretty big uh, welding job I even ran out of wire at one point and gas and had to go um, get some refills done but uh, overall I'm pretty happy with it so the trailer is eight foot wide and uh, the bunks are five foot tall so you know subtract the four inches for the uh, width of the tubing on there and that's the width of these uh, I think they're like 87 or so in between them um, the height why we went five foot high is because I need to be able to grab 
the logs out and off of this trailer with my equipment. So um, being that it's already almost four foot high off the ground um, and then five, it's at nine foot. So I can get them off around 10, 11 feet high, um, no problem. So just being able to remove the logs when I bring some of them back here for my sawmill. Um, the uh, overall length of the trailer is only 30 feet. So we have it set up here with two bunks per like 10 foot section because they were cutting these logs at 13 foot, 13 six range so that they could put them in an end dump, dump truck. Uh, so they have a ton of them that way. Hopefully in the future we can get them to cut them longer and then we can put full length logs on here and that'd be a lot easier um, just loading out the wood versus trying to do two separate stacks, one on the back, one on the front here. Um, the other reason why we went with this smaller trailer is because the area that um, we'll get to be able to pull logs out of, it's up in a really tight area up in the mountains. So trying to get up there with a longer trailer would be pretty hard. Um, there is some uh, advisories in some of the areas for uh, kingpin the back axle of 30 feet. So this trailer deck is only 30 feet long. Um, kingpin the back axle is a little bit less than that. So we should be able to get in there and out no problem. Um, overall, pretty happy with it. It's a, it's a pretty big welding task that I did, but I'm pretty happy with the design and how it all came out and being able to uh, remove these and use this trailer uh, for something else if I need to uh, is also a nice feature. So um, just a couple of things left to do. Put some uh, fresh paint on this just to keep it from rusting and uh, get that DOT tape on there and some mud flaps on the back and uh, we'll be good to go. So uh, thanks for watching and please stay tuned because I'll hopefully get some action with this trailer soon uh, once I get this all put that put back together um, for DOT reasons. Uh, we're not too far off. So um, please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. And thank you again for everybody that's been uh, commenting on all the recent videos. We're uh, getting back into the swing of things here. So uh, stay tuned for more truck action and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Mm -hmm.